welcome my dear students for standard 8 subject science chapter 5 inside the atom module 1 before beginning with the lesson let us see what are learning objectives in this lesson you will learn about dalton's atomic theory you will also learn about thomson's plum pudding model of atom you will also learn rutherford scattering experiment let us begin with a lesson that is inside the atom students think about the following questions what is meant by matter what is an atom what is the smallest unit of matter atoms are very small an atom is the basic unit of an element since atoms are the building blocks of chemistry to make a burger we use different ingredients and this ingredients combine to form a burger similarly we can say that each ingredients are element and burger is a molecule matter itself is a combination of different atoms if we look at the salt crystal it is made up of mixing two atoms namely na sodium and cl chloride this all together forms a salt crystal scientists have discovered 118 kinds of atoms which we call element we can find them laid out on a chart called periodic table this is a periodic table here you all can observe 118 different kinds of element element combine to form a molecule molecules of element containing two or more atoms of different kinds chemically combined together are called as molecules of compound for example water molecule h2o in this image you can see that oxygen atom o combines with hydrogen atom to form h2o that is water the table shows that h and o combines in a fixed proportion that is two atoms of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen to give water h2o now students we can give the answer for this questions we have seen that matter is made up of molecules molecules are formed from atoms effectively an atom is the smallest unit of matter an atom is the smallest particle of an element which retains its chemical identity in all the physical and chemical changes let's have a look on the history of matter Indian philosopher Kanar during 6th century stated that there is a limit to divide matter into small particles the indivisible particles that constitute matter were named by Kanar Muni as pramanu meaning the smallest particles he also stated that pramanu is indestructible Greek philosopher Democritus during 5th century stated that matter is made of small particles and this cannot be divided 
the smallest particle of matter was named by Democritus as atom. In Greek language, atomos means the one which cannot be cut. Let's understand Dalton's atomic theory. Dalton's atomic theory. British scientist J.D. Dalton put forth atomic theory in 1803 AD. He proposed the atomic theory to study the structure of atom and the composition of matter. Let's understand this postulate. According to this theory, Matter consists of very small particles called atoms. Atoms are indivisible and indestructible particles which can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. All atoms of a given element have identical mass while atoms of different elements have different masses. So students, now let's understand this postulate one by one. Now let's understand the first postulate of Dalton's atomic theory. It states that matter consists of very small particles called atoms. It means when we go on dividing matter into smaller and smaller sections, what we get at the end is atom. Similarly, you all must have tasted a sweet called Bundi Laddu. If we go on dividing this laddu, at the end we will be left with a small part which is bundi and the further division of this bundi is not possible. Hence this was the first postulate. Now let us study about second postulate. Atoms are indivisible and indestructible particles which can neither be created not destroyed in a chemical reaction. What do we mean by this? Yes, it means that atoms are like fundamental units. Dividing them further is not possible. Also, in a chemical reaction, atoms may combine together to form new units. Consider this example. H atom combines with oxygen. The final compound is water that is H2O. In this reaction, no new atoms are formed and also no atom is destroyed. Hence, this was the second postulate, which was easy to understand. Let's move on to third postulate. Third postulate states that all atoms of a given element have identical mass, while atoms of different elements have different masses. Let's understand this. If we zoom into H atom, that is hydrogen atom, we will find that all the atoms that make up hydrogen atom are same. And how they are same? They just have identical mass and similar chemical properties. And similarly, this is the case with oxygen atom. Yes, this was all about Dalton's atomic theory. Now, let's move on to another interesting theory, which is Thomson's plum pudding model of atom. Now, let's understand Thomson's plum pudding model of atom. The plum pudding model of atom put forth by Thomson in the year 1904 is the first model of atomic structure. The scientist J.J. Thomson demonstrated experimentally that the negatively charged particles inside an atom have a mass that is 1,800 times less than a hydrogen atom. Thomson said that atom contains negatively charged particles. 
called corpuscles and this term was later changed to electron now let understand the postulate according to this model the positive charge is distributed throughout the atom and the negatively charged electrons are embedded in it the distributed positive charge is balanced by the negative charge on the electrons therefore the atom becomes electrically neutral this model of the atom is called thomson's atomic model thomson carried out a detailed analysis to come up with this arrangement and it was accepted by a majority of the scientist community at that time many scientists called it the plum pudding model because plum pudding or plum cake is sweet dish prepared during christmas and in old times this dish was made in western countries by adding pieces of dry fruit called plum the plums represent electron and pudding represents the positive charges this model was extremely simple but it was one of the major breakthrough in scientific history since earlier it was believed that an atom is electrically neutral in spite of having negatively charged electrons in it however thomson overcame this difficulty by putting forth the plum pudding model of atomic structure now let understand rutherford scattering experiment rutherford studied the inside of atom by his celebrated scattering experiment and put forth the nuclear model of atom in the year 1911 The image shows the diagram of Rutherford experiment. Let us understand this diagram. Rutherford took a very thin gold foil, thickness about 10 raised to minus 4 mm, and bombarded it with positively charged alpha particles emitted by a radioactive element. He observed the path of alpha particles by means of a fluorescent screen. around the gold foil it was expected that the alpha particles would get reflected from the gold foil if the positively charged mass were evenly distributed inside the atom unexpectedly most of the alpha particles went straight through the foil a small number of alpha particles get deflected from the original path through a small angle a still smaller number of alpha particles get deflected through a large angle and surprisingly one alpha particle out of 20000 bounces back in the direction opposite to the original path the large number of the alpha particles that went straight through the fall indicates that there was no obstacle in their path it means that there must be mainly an empty space inside the atoms in the solid gold foil the small number of alpha particles that get deflected through a small or a big angle must have faced an obstacle in their path it means that the positively charged and heavy part causing obstruction would be in the center of the atom from this Rutherford put forth a nuclear model for atom. Now let's understand. Rutherford nuclear model of atom. Observe this image. This alpha particle try to avoid something in the atom. What could it be? This thing is called nucleus. Nucleus is a tiny and dense body that is present in the center of an atom. As it is tiny, it occupies very little space. But as it is dense, it is heavy. In fact, almost the entire mass of the atom resides in the nucleus. 
but why did the alpha particle avoid the nucleus well the alpha particles were repelled by the nucleus this means that the nucleus is positively charged like the alpha particles this also leads us to understand that why some alpha particles rebound by 180 degree they are repelled to the maximum extent when they head directly towards the nucleus this is why they are deflected by 180 degrees now we are clear what through the fort observed let's see what he concluded from this observation the observation which says that most almost all went through the gold foil and were not deflected the conclusion for this is that atom contains a significant amount of empty space the second observation was few not many bounce directly back and he gave up the conclusion that the atom is dense core nucleus must be very small and the third observation was several that is some pass through the goal fall and were deflected the conclusion for this is the nucleus must be positive that is law of repulsion and this was the conclusion drawn from rutherford's nuclear model of atom have a look on this but this model is incomplete without a comparison of this model with thomson's atomic model let's compare how they are different from one another thomson theory states that electrons are embedded in a positively charged solid material which is spherical in shape whereas rutherford theory states that an atom is composed of an atomic nucleus around which electrons are revolving in an orbit thomson's theory does not give any detail about the atomic nucleus whereas rutherford theory explains about the atomic nucleus thomson theory states that electrons are uniformly distributed in an atom whereas rutherford theory states that electrons are located around a central solid material thomson theory indicates that atom is spherical in shape whereas rutherford theory indicates that an atom has a central solid core called as nucleus surrounded by the electrons thomson theory does not give any idea about constituents of nucleus whereas rutherford theory states that nucleus is composed of protons and neutrons now let's have a quick recap on what we have learned we have learned about dalton's atomic theory and these are the postulates given by dalton this is the very first postulate this was the second postulate and finally this was the last postulate let's move on to another theory this is rutherford scattering experiment diagram we have also learned about thomson's atomic model we can compare this model with a watermelon where the seed represents negatively charged and the red portion represents positively charged thank you my dear students we will meet in the next video